Good morning. I am Dr. Huang. Today, I am going to show you how to conduct uh, titrations. This is what we need for this experiment. For this experiment, we will handle acids and bases. Uh, in order to best protect us, we need to wear goggles. This is true for every experiment. And wear gloves. OK, I'm ready for the real experiment. In order to perform titrations, we need a glassware, which is called burette. This is a burette. Uh, it has a well, which has two positions. One is this cross, so this means it's closed. Or I can turn this in this position, which align with the burette. This is an open position. OK, when we put sodium hydroxide inside, we have to make sure you have this well in the closed position. Before we fill this burette with a sodium hydroxide solution, we want to rinse this burette with sodium hydroxide solution three times. The reason we want to do the rinse is if the inside is wet, which is most likely to happen after you clean the burette, and after three times of rinse, then the solution you finally add it to the burette will be exactly the same molarity as what you prepared in this beaker. Make sure uh, this well is in the closed position. Every time when you rinse, you use 5 to 10 milliliters of sodium hy hydroxide solution. OK, whenever you rinse, you want to make this flat. And this end is on top of the waste bucket. And make sure, make sure your solution is wetting everywhere for the inside of this burette. After this burette is rinsed with sodium hydroxide solution three times, now we can fill this burette with the sodium hydroxide solution. Then let's clamp this burette on the uh, stand. When you do experiment, you want to make yourself comfortable. You do not want to do experiment to do titration like this. So let's try to move them around so uh, I will feel most comfortable. And also, I want to stay away from the other part. If something happened, I don't want to knock them down. At this position, I feel most comfortable. And then we have to make sure there's no bubble in this part. Let's say if you can see the bubble. Let the bubble run, come out. After you get rid of the bubble, what you want to do is make sure the meniscus is aligned with the zero milliliter on top. We will use a scoopular to add KHP to the LMR flask. But the problem is, we don't know how much is 0.2 gram. The strategy is, we add a tiny amount and get the mass. For example, when you add a tiny amount, the first measurement is about 0.100 gram. Then we will know we add roughly the same amount the next time. Let's open the side door of the electronic balance, and we place the early math flex on top of that, and then close the door. Make sure we press the button in the center, and make sure the reading is about zero.
Okay, this is 0.041 gram. We roughly need 0.16 grams. Now we get 0.228 is a little over 10%. It should work. Remember, we need to record the mass immediately after the measurement. Now we are moving back to our titration station. I need to add water to dissolve this. It doesn't matter how much water you add, but roughly you want about 25 milliliters. You can use a graduate cylinder or you just estimate. Use a mark on this one Erlenmeyer flask. I'm not going to use a graduate cylinder because I think I have pretty good estimate. Okay, this is 50. I add it to about half, so this should be about 25. Again, 25 doesn't need to be exact. After you dissolve the KHP, don't forget to add the acid base indicator, which is the, in this small bottle. You only need to add about three to five drops. Now I'm going to add the stir bar into this Erlenmeyer flask. I want to stir that so the dissolving can be very fast. At the same time, I can swirl this so it will dissolve faster. Let me adjust the height of the burette, and then turn on the stir bar. Oh, oh, okay, it's too violent, so I need to adjust the speed. Now I'm going to adjust the height of the burette again. It seems I had to adjust the direction of this clamp. Next, we are ready to do the titration. When you do titration, you want to make sure you are comfortable. So I need a chair behind me. Now I'm very comfortable. At the very beginning of the titration, you can add the sodium hydroxide faster. When we add sodium hydroxide, you can see the pink color appears, then disappears very fast. If the color disappears very fast, that means you can yield the current speed. The color appears and disappears almost immediately. Follow the progress, the color stays longer and longer. That means you need to adjust the speed to slower. Right now you can say the color stays much longer. Now we need to add drop by drop. This is the most important part. If you screw this up, you have to start over. Right now you can say it stays really long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this out. Let me turn off the stirrer first. 
and then make sure if there is a tiny drop here, I'm going to let it touch. And then I'm going to use my wash bottle to rinse this down. You can say, right now I need to add half a drop each time. You may wonder how to add less than a drop. Look at what I'm doing. Turn the wheel very gently, very slowly. You say a drop is forming, but it's not falling off. Don't tap the beer red. Do this. Again, I use this wash bottle to rinse this down. I want to emphasize this is the most important step for this whole experiment. If you screw this up, you have to st start over. Now you can see the color is light pink. So at this moment, if you're not sure if this is the end point, uh, you have one solution to do this. Instead of to consider this is the end, you take the reading right now. I'm not that tall, so I need to take this off from the stand. And then let my eye to be the same level at the bottom of the meniscus. So right now, uh, my reading is 11.9. I would say between 11.9 and 12. So I would say 11.91. Remember, you always need to estimate another digit. Uh, let's record the data immediately. The volume of sodium hydroxide solution we use is 11.91. As I said, you're not sure if this is the real end point. So you want to add another a quarter of a drop to say if it becomes too pink. Let's try it now. And then I want to rinse the wall. So make sure every drop of sodium hydroxide is going down to the solution. Uh, I think this color is, uh, is maybe a little bit too pink, so I will keep the original reading. If it's not too pink, I'm going to read the current reading and replace the previous one. For any experiment, including titration, you have to make sure your experimental results is repeatable. In other words, between two trials, the percentage of difference between the two should be less than 0.5% for a professional person to do this titration. But as for our class, if your percentage of difference between the two trials is less than 3%, I will take it. Let's say how many milliliters we use for the second time. This is 10.35 milliliters. We need to record the number immediately. It's 10.35 milliliters. 
The next part of the experiment is to find the molarity of a known solution, which is acetic acid. We don't know the molarity, so we call this unknown. We will use um, this uh, pipette to transfer. This pipette can transfer 10.00 milliliters of solution exactly. It cannot give any other volumes. Uh, we will have to use this pump to help us to pump the solution, suck this up. OK, put your pump here. Make sure it is tight. And then we insert this pipette into the unknown solution. And then scroll. Now we are going to transfer the liquid into this Erlenmeyer flask. You can take this pump off and let it flow. Now we have 10 milliliters of acetic acid in this Erlenmeyer flask. Do not forget to add this acid base indicator. You need about three to five drops. Now we are going to add this stir bar inside this Erlenmeyer flask. Add this way. And then we want to add a little bit of water so the stir bar will be completely immersed. Before each titration, make sure you have enough solution in your burette. If you're not sure how much you need it, always add to the zero milliliter on top. We adjust the, the position of the red. We are ready to go for the next titration. Uh, let's compare the current titration uh, solution with the previous one. These two colors is about the same. That means uh, we are doing a very good job. Let's take a look at how much solution we used for this titration for the unknown. We may need to use a white paper to help us visualize the bottom of the, of the meniscus. This time, we have used 22.83 milliliters. Let's record the data immediately. Twenty-three point eight three. The second time for the titration of the unknown acetic acid, the volume we use is twenty-four point zero one milliliters. After the experiment, do not forget to dispose the waste properly. Otherwise the lab manager will not be very happy. First, let's try to take out this stir bar. We have something called a fish pole. Whoa, it's coming out. Then let's rinse this stir bar to clean that. And then we dump the solution into the waste container. After we dump the waste, we need to clean this Erlenmeyer flask with distilled water three times.
At the very end, we have to put everything back into its original location. Now we are done.